Alright, people have been asking what tools I use. Um, I figured the easiest way to do this was just walk around the room with the camera. Um, biggest tool I got is the Bible. Start that off. Almost every morning I read at least a chapter. I got the old and the new. And uh, if it's not first thing in the morning, it's it's sometime during the day, but usually it's first thing in the morning to start my day off. And then I've got the bushing drivers. I don't think they make this set anymore. Uh, this is a really old set. Uh, no, eight. I got them from ATEC Trans Tool, and they still make bushing sets, but I don't think they have the same numbers that I got. I know people have bought you know, sets off of there and they're different. I know there's three different sets. I think there's a two small ones and a and a master kit, which is what this was supposed to have been. And it seems to do most everything I need to do with few exceptions and I'll show you what I use for that. Uh, these seal installers for uh, doing uh, see me on 4L80s that's a little seal right here that's what these are for and they're for uh, 125s, 200s, 204s uh, they'll do any of those seals that uh, are like that but um, they're made specifically for the different transmissions to sit, set it at the correct depth um, it doesn't fit the 4L80 but if you know when to stop it won't smash the hell out of it uh, back in here <coughs> this also came from ATEC this is for doing the 204 R's and 200's to hold the output shaft up um, I think my tool didn't come with everything I don't know you look at the picture it's on the board and it looks like it's all there but it doesn't work very well on 204 R's I had to uh, come up with a little adapter it's just a uh, 3 8 tubing to help set the, the depth properly or to take up the difference of the depth that it doesn't cover. Uh, this tool here I don't know where it came from it's for doing 4T60s and it'll do all the way up it sets the sun gears and the drum all together at one time um, I haven't used it forever I mean it does work but it's not that hard to set the drums down in there I've used it for some other things uh, there's a video of me using it on a 5 is it 5R110 or 4R100 I think it's a 4R100 that had the PTO on it and it's a, that's a real chore to get down in there easily and that worked really well on that I had to do a little bit of modification to it. My uh, bushing drivers, uh, this is the rest of the kit that comes with that. Uh, this here specific one is for doing the pump bushings on the 350s. Um, my sealed installer kit, and I have tried to find this damn thing. There is no name on it. Um, I've looked everywhere. I can't find the thing. I thought I bought it from ATEC back in the day. Um, but they say that they've never made a steel one. I have the plastic one. I'll show you what's left of it. I had that before I had this one. I have no clue where I found this at. But it is a really good uh, seal installer kit. And this is uh, the rest of it. I uh, got all my seminar video CDs are in here and any other CDs that I need to come up with I keep in there uh, this little this little dude right here get you a book and uh, I write down all the part numbers that are really hard to find and I'll even uh, write down a really strange problems that I've had that I've cured 
I'll, uh, I'll write that in there. Modulator pin lengths. I write all the, any of that stuff I write in there. So some of that information is really hard to come by. So that's what I do for that. Grease for my guns. Um, let's go through this right here. This is that center punch that I use. I always keep an extra one. Got it from Matco. Let's see here. This sets from Cornwell. And this is all my inverted and regular uh, Torx. Uh, oh, what do you call the stupid things? Where are they? They've got the safety deal on it, so that you've got to have a special socket to get them out. And that's that kit. As there's, a, I think that's just the number for the case. But it did come from Cornwell. Let's see. We got this one from Cornwell. And this is the spline drives. I got two different ones. I got the one with the safety deals. And I think I got the normal one too. Yeah, got the normal one too. So there's that one. Uh, my soldering gun, snap on. This one works really well. I like it a lot. Use it quite a bit. Let's see what I got in here. It's been so long since I've been in this. Oh, it's a Big Daddy Riveter. Don't hardly ever use that. Used to use that back when I worked at the dealership and putting in the. Uh, door motors and stuff like that. Let's see what I got in here. I think this is the tool for doing the back of the case on a, on a uh, A4LDs and um, 5R55s, that rear race that uh, can go bad on the sprag. It's the tool for drilling that out, driving that out and everything. These here are um, Mercedes kick down solenoids and uh, three speed version, or actually they were four speeds, but uh, the 722.3s and stuff like that. Uh, that's the rest of that kit. Throttle valve sleeve kit. I don't remember what I used that for. Been a long time since I've done any of that. Obviously, because I don't remember. Got a, this is my little slide hammer I use for a lot of stuff. It's the snap on. I got two of them. Um, I don't see a number. Oh, there it is. Keep a little bit of butane back there. Let's see what we got here. Get everything back in its proper spot. And a little Scotch Bright deals that. Uh, this little kit's kind of good to have. You put it on your drill, and it's made for uh, doing throttle bodies and and carburetor ports and stuff like that. But it, I've used it on a lot of stuff. This is the E4OD uh, tool for checking the wiring solenoids, where you don't have to try to get your uh, multimeter up inside there you can just plug it in uh, keep extra scribes 
This is where I keep all my extra little check balls, washers, my seals. These are cup plugs I use for the 4L60s on the uh, third capsule. I always take out and plug it. A lot of stuff in here don't hardly use anymore because uh, we just don't see them anymore. But that's where I kept all my special stuff. This is an old tool <laughs> for pulling trouble codes on Fords. It's, it's kind of outdated. This here I just keep because I don't know that you'll it'd probably be pretty hard to find one. And uh, I just keep it. This is a C6 R code servo cover. Uh, one day it's probably going to be worth some money. <laughs> You just don't see them anymore. These are extra bolts for 4L60 bell housings. Little engraver I got that uh, I engrave all my tools because they, you get all these new guys in here and they like to tend to try to walk off with them and pretend that it's their tool and uh, they always owned it. Uh, so I mark all my stuff. Don't hardly ever use that anymore. I gotta use that when I work for the dealership. It holds up your windows. And got nothing in there. These are just all my extra clips and hitch pins and you can get those anywhere, Harbor Freight, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this little deal here is for tracing down electrical shorts and opens and stuff like that. Yeah. This little dude does a 4R44, 4R44, um, what does it do? A uh, pressure regulator uh, and torque converter modulator valve. That's what that reamer's for. Uh, keep extra homes around. You can get them from anywhere. And I always keep extra batteries around for my uh, calipers. Let's see what we got here. Uh, it's a uh, extra long punch set so sometimes that comes in handy I got that from Matco let's see here let's fitting back like it was now. Oh, come on now. This little drawer in here, I got all my screw extractors. This is a really good set. It needs a lot of pieces replaced in it now. I, I like this more than most uh, that I've ever come across. And uh, this is my old soldering gun, I believe. Yeah. I like the other one better than this one. Still works, but much better. These are uh, sockets for using on your taps. You put your tap in there and put an extension on it and, or a ratchet and you can use that. really like them a lot. I don't remember where I got them from. Let's see if we can see some light on this subject. Made in the USA. Yeah. Let's 
it just been. I don't know. Didn't have a name on it. And all it has is a patent number. This is uh, my drill bit set that I bought from Harbor Freight, the titanium ones. And it works really well. Um, carbide bits for putting in your grinder. And I just got um, all my helical sets are up inside here. Extra drill bits I got. Got them all marked by size, so I have to hunt for them. <clears> That's <throat> a good thing to get. These are little bitty drill bits, and you can go to any hobby store and get these. But they're very small drill bits, and then you get the uh, uh, bit holder to use with them. And I'll show that to you. That it all works really well. Uh, cones and stuff. And then I got all my, a lot of my specialty tools. This here is an old tool that you could count the teeth on a Ford speedometer. Actually, you could do it with a, almost any, but it's made for Fords. And you stick it in a hole and uh, turn your output shaft and it'll tell you how many teeth are on the output shaft if you didn't mark it. Height gauge, my age gauge. Uh, who made this thing? Doesn't say on it. I don't remember where I got it. Probably from ATEC. I don't know. Uh, this tool does the center supports on 125s, 200 lockups, 200s, 204Rs, any of them that have that center support that's designed like that and this is the one of the ends for it and then there's another one in there somewhere this uh, came off of a bushing or sill driver set I got I don't remember where I got it but it wasn't very good but I do use some of the stuff for other things uh, this is a 4L80 tool for doing I think it's the center support looks like it uh, might be the pump pretty short might be for the pump don't have to use that very much anymore because they get the scarf cut rings this is one of the handles for that uh, Steel driver set. And all these probably came from Tran ATEC Trans Tool. <coughs> uh, this 4L60E stator turbine shaft, 4T60 and 4T60E um, drum, input drum. This is the other piece of that tool over there. this one goes for. A lot of this stuff I don't use anymore because I just don't need it that much. But this is all resizers. Uh, 700 turbine shaft. Must be the small. I think that's what this came in. And a couple large hones. This is a stud remover set. This works really well. And this is just various um, pullers that I've, I've got. These are for spreading manifolds out on Chevrolets. I guess you can use it on anything, but I have had occasions where I could use these and then on the transmissions I don't remember what I used them for but they did come in handy and they did work um, this here was a spring uh, compressor for struts and I, I took it apart and I use it for uh, putting in 
140s and 240s and 150s the uh, planetary in the case for the Toyotas Got a rivet gun in here uh, UV fluorescent for checking you know, leaks when I was doing that kind of stuff axle bearing remover set when I was doing that kind of stuff this little dude right here, don't use it hardly much anymore, but it does come in handy for fixing the dowel pin holes on your transmission cases when they get wore out. And, uh, you know, when you don't want to have to replace the case, it comes in pretty handy. And a lot of the stuff I bought from uh, transmission shops that were going out of business. These are my AC gauges back when I was doing that. Chassis year. Uh, that comes in pretty handy. They do make a version now that's uh, wireless. I don't even have the case that it came in anymore. Um, but you can just type in chassis year. And that's who made it. And that comes in pretty handy. My little Dremel tool. Tamp and die set. Uh, air hammer accessories in there. These are both pressure gauges for checking pressures. Time and light, I hardly ever use that anymore. Serpentine belt tool. Don't ever use that anymore because I don't do any of that. Tie rod end tool. Air pressure tester for cooling system. I don't even know why I keep that flashlight around anymore. And, uh, There goes that. That's a steering wheel puller, but it does work for other things. I keep uh, all the extra stuff that I've needed over the years in there. Another cooling system tester. And another steering wheel puller set. This one's different. Different uh, polar sets can end up doing different stuff. Every once in a while, I need some of the stuff that comes in there when you got to go in and pull stuff off for you know, trying to get some of these steering systems out of there to put some of them switches up in there. Not very often. I don't think there's anything in here. Oh, this is a. Uh, that set that came with my die grinder. Wrenches. I got the uh, dial indicator for doing rear ends, checking in clearances and stuff like that. And inch pound torque wrench. This was, uh, I believe, a cylinder board gauge. gauge for something uh, 
This here, part of one of the cooler sets. This here is a tool for, it's from Snap-on. I don't know if you can see that number. And this tool allows you to pull and install the bushings on the smaller uh, bushings like uh, 350s, 700s, uh, 200s. 204 hours, stuff like that. They make uh, two or three different ones, and I only ever had the small one. Another um, fork wrench. Another um, depth gauge. Cooler. I never use that anymore. AC clutch tool, don't ever use that anymore. This is for removing wheel locks when you don't. The customer didn't leave you the tool, and I haven't had to use it in a hundred million years. But uh, some of the guys out there sometimes. They don't have one. Uh, I can use this one. I don't try to keep it. Uh, Noid light. Don't ever use that anymore. This is my other bushing driver set. And uh, this is what I use to put the rest of my bushings in that my, my bushing kit doesn't fit. Don't ever use that anymore. These are wrenches that I probably don't need for a while. And just brake caliper set. Don't hardly ever use that. Harmonic bouncer compression test. Don't ever use that. This is this was my grandfather's clutch alignment tool. And uh, it's old, old, old. All right, seal installers for and this all probably came from A Tech. Yeah, uh, this fits all different kinds of 670s, it does a spray grace. Um, AODs, the blue ones, CD4Es, the black ones, AX4N, some special mm -hmm. seal sizers for, uh, I don't know, I got them written on here. It's like 4 HP 22s, and uh, that one's for 4 HP 22, and no part numbers or anything on them. Uh, keep getting interrupted. So anyway, I think those probably came from ATEC. And I believe this uh, E4OD tool, center support tool, came from them also. Um, this is all part of it here. This is part of the tool for doing the a, A518s, A500s, 618s, 46REs, all that for checking the overdrive section. You can make your own. It's just a half inch thick is where you need to have the, your your thickness of this across here. Uh, I don't remember what I made this for. I made this special tool for something. Probably a one time use deal. Um, yeah, different tools for pulling out uh, connectors out of harnesses and stuff. This is an old tool that you didn't need to count the Chrysler input shaft splines. You could just stick it on there and tell you which one it was. It was pretty handy back in the day. Just wiring tools in there. Yep, this is another piece of the tool for that for checking your height. 
you can make your own of that too. And I'd stick this in there and see if it came out different on the next one. Uh, hood prop up tool. Came from. Yeah, some of these tool manufacturers ought to put their, their stuff on their tools. Forget where you bought the stuff from. If you liked it, you might want to go back and get it on. Here's the tool I made for checking the. Uh, Depth. This is the first tool I made just for lining it up. Uh, different heel bars, different files specifically for aluminum. Uh, this little dude I used to use a lot back in the day when I was pulling out transmissions. You'd stick this, fit real nice, you'd get it up on a harmonic balancer and turn your, turn your crank around. This little file set here from Mac I use the uh, flat one quite a bit and the flat one and the triangle one quite a bit sometimes the round one uh, this little tool over here was for adjusting carburetors I mean, you don't do that crap anymore uh, different spline drive sockets this is what I used to use to drive in my U-joints with uh, a little files for your threads and uh, these work really good there's, there's two different ones and yeah, here's the other one I don't know what happened to the plastic rubber handle on it I don't see the number on it but I think it came as a set uh, anything special you know got a round file I use that a lot. All the Allen heads that I don't hardly ever use. Tubing cutter and flaring tool. It's uh, still used fairly often. Serpentine belt tool. This is a tubing bender. Part number on it. If you can see it. Imperial Eastman 368 FH. Uh, tool for pulling out radios on Fords. tool for pulling off the uh, quick disconnects on the uh, fuel lines and transmission lines and all that kind of stuff. These were for marking vacuum hoses and everything, quartz where they went to so you wouldn't forget where they went. Screwdriver set that I got. I only need parts out of it. Another quick disconnect tools. What's oh, doing the same thing? Mostly I don't use much of this. Most of the stuff I use all the time is over there on my other box. I have the C-clamps from Harbor Freight. Uh, 
some wobble sockets that I don't hardly ever use to keep extra bits for my Torx Plus in here. Bit driver set I don't use. Veneer calipers. That's where I keep all my extra stuff I showed on the videos about uh, Chrysler tools for putting the linkage back in and everything like that. Uh, small parts for my impact. You know, if I need hammer pins, uh, clips to hold the sockets on, the uh, O-ring expanders, all that to keep extras. So I'm not down waiting on parts. Uh, even kept an extra anvil for one of them. I don't think I got that gun anymore. This little deal here keeps all my extra stuff that I have for doing uh, Honda uh, shaft bushings. I keep all my plugs I take out of 4L60s where they had the uh, plug for the hydraulic lockup valves you could put in there when I would take these out. These work perfectly for blocking off the accumulator on a 350. Most of all this is just Honda tools that I've made for pulling bushings and installing them. Uh, extra scribes that I got been in that drawer. This is where I keep all the stuff that I use that uh, worked out perfectly for like putting around seals and driving driving them in or just little special things as the, the tool I made for pulling out the bushings on the Chryslers. There's another one I made for pulling out the bushing on something. I haven't used it in a hundred years so I don't remember what it was for. This we used to put in the back of 204 hours before I had the tool to hold it up. That's what I used that for. Uh, I don't know, just different things that I've used over the years. Uh, posi locks and fuses and stuff that uh, if we would junk out a car. I would go out there and pull all the fuses out of them. These little dudes right here come in real handy. These posi locks. Make all kinds of different ones. Uh, you, you make one that you can put a fuse inside of it. And we got a pretty good little deal. Them grease, nothing there. This here has got all my seminar books in the top shelf. And go back all the way. That's my oldest one. Don't have a year. It's pretty ancient though. Yeah, oldest one I got in here is 83. So, got all the ones that would fit in here and here. Yeah, have the rest of them up here. Uh, this is good. Good to have air check book. Tells you which ports to air check. Sprag book. Tells you all the sprags. These are pretty handy. I mean, it doesn't have everything in it. All your check ball books.
and uh, down in here I got this whole top drawers the Chevrolet got them broke down into the different years and I take articles out of magazines and uh, put them with each transmission so I got I got a ton of information it's all Fords and Dodges all foreign stuff down here and this little dude right here adapter case uh, press it it's really nice especially for doing 60s 70s and stuff like that got all these different attachments for doing the drums and things Got a drill press in it. I got here a little vise, a little vise there. I think all of that came from Harbor Freight. This here came from Trans uh, ATEC Trans Tool. It's a E4OD case holder. This is all full of books all the way down. This is uh, stuff that. I don't hardly use anymore. I don't see the trannies. Uh, F4AELs, G4AELs, F4EATs. Um, that, that's what those two tools were for. It's a tool I made myself for doing 4L80s and just various tools that I've made to do different things. I don't know who made this. This is my heat gun for heating up bearings and shrink wrap and all that kind of stuff. Looks like it says Milwaukee on there. And then I keep all the tools I'll show you in a minute. I keep them in there. This here is a Amco version of the Tranex. And I uh, bought that from a shop that was going out of business. And this is I keep these zip ties in this box. I use those for holding parts together. I need to stay together and I've been using those for that's these specific ones right here I've been using for probably I don't know at least 10 years uh, I've had to throw a few away but usually I can, I can make them keep working I just bend the tab back up and uh, they, they've been working really good This is my Arbor Press. I use the hell out of this thing for pressing in bushings. And uh, I don't remember who made it. I believe this came from um, Northern. Uh, this is a little uh, deal I made. Remember where this is a parts washer. I don't remember where I came up with it. Somebody was going to throw it away or something. It works fine. I'm making a reaming station out of it. This is the Sonex reaming jig. And I got it set up to where I just bolt it onto here. And uh, I can put cutting fluid in here and run it over my parts. I that worked pretty well. This is my vacuum tester for uh, checking valve bodies from Sonex. And my vacuum pump that works it. And this is something we don't use very much anymore because our our flusher for the cooler lines has a flow gauge in it, so we know what the flow rate is. 
this was uh, the sauna flow by Sonax that you hook to the cooler lines and it'll tell you the flow rate of it. This is the Tranex 2000 or 1000. This is all the connectors. No, that's uh, this is all the connectors for it. This is a uh, you hook it up to the wiring harness. You can monitor what the computer is commanding, and you can also control it uh, manually. Comes in pretty handy for the ones that we got the connectors for. Kind of getting away from all that now. They don't. Uh, since they're putting the techums on the inside, can't really do any of that stuff. My long handles for doing bushings. Uh, I don't remember where this set came from. This came from Maytech. I got uh, my cutoff tool, corn well. That drill don't work anymore. I ought to get rid of it. Corn well for my die grinder. I have an angle Mac uh, drill. This air scraper came from Mac, I believe. I used the hell out of it. I need to tighten it back up. I don't know, I can't see a name anymore. I believe that's where I got it. Snap on used to make one and they quit making it. And uh it's either Mac or Matco. Start, started making one as soon as I saw it. And I snatched that sucker up because it works really well. These are special bits for aluminum. If you try to use these little bits on aluminum, they're going to clog up real bad. This one works on aluminum. Just wire brushes. Uh, different tools I've made for different things. Uh, what was it? Alright. That was the old meter I used to have. This is uh, 1956 I think. I did a video on it. Craftsman Dremel tool. It still works, but this cord up here is uh, pretty screwed. Uh, yeah, 1956. So, pretty neat little thing to, to have. I don't remember what's in there, nothing important, I don't think. There's that air scraper, so that's who made it, Astro Pneumatic. Um, I got this for getting down into deeper places that uh, my regular die grinder can't get to. There's that air scraper. You can probably get this at just about anywhere gun places are. But this is, a, you, I use these for getting into bores, valve bores on the valve body. I need to get cleaned out. That's uh, nothing important. Here's a 
come along used to use back on some of the old stuff you'd have to pull the drive uh, the rear end backwards and uh, it was easier than pulling the whole rear end out you just use a come along on it pull the rear end back uh, this is a tool I made for putting seals in on a some uh, some ZF unit front wheel drive uh, getting the seals down on the differential pinion shaft this is the EEC 4 uh, breakout box for Fords I've used it a few times drill guides. Here's my slide hammer. Uh, Tech Pack Fits All makes these different ones. This is 4L60 and for the third check ball capsule. Uh, there's one there's one in there somewhere and maybe that's it. I thought it was I thought I had three grooves. Anyway, there's another one for 4T60s. I, I only used it a few times. This is a bore sizing tool from Sonex for the uh, 4R100s, E4LDs. I used the hell out of that. Uh, these fittings came in the um, pilot bearing puller is what that originally is designed for and uh, all that stuff come out of there I had various different uses that I've come up with this is that rubber piece that I used on that tool for the 4T60s for doing that 5R uh, um, or 4R100 PTO uh, overdrive section and uh, it worked out real well. It's a tool I made for doing the 4F27 uh, band anchor pins and uh, FNR5s. Uh, I saw that uh, uh, who is making it is Superior. I think Superior is making an adjustable bolt for it now. So that's what I'm going to start using on that. It's, uh, I think there's no name on here. I think this came from ATEC also. TR4025C 75 900W. This is probably a part number 04 01. There's also 142.42. This is 4L60 uh, pump alignment band. This other one's uh, E4LD. I only got the two. This one's 11-00. 142.42. That's a manufacturer number. TR 4025C-73- 1053-W It's the only two that I got uh, I make everything work with those two It's a bit driver set for Mac I use it a lot all my extra impacts, stuff I don't use anymore. Uh, grease gun, don't never use that anymore. This here, save the planet system. I have used it a few times in the, since I've had it, but I uh, used to rebuild the crap out of planets. And uh, they got all the shims and stuff in there for doing the various different ones. I think they still sell it. Uh, fuel injection tester. Don't never hardly use that anymore. 
every once in a while when we need to check the fuel system. Uh, grease gun. This is my vacuum tester. It's probably seen in a couple videos. Don't hardly ever use that anymore either. Uh, those are for doing oil filters. This is my test meter. I don't remember what this box came out of. Something I had, I uh, just repurposed it. And uh, it's my test leads. And I got connectors I can hook into wiring pins. There's my multimeter, my digital one. And there's the and I got an analog one. And uh, different things I keep for checking harnesses. These are different uh, extension kits for checking harnesses. Uh, power probe, that's a pretty cool little tool. I don't never use this anymore. It's for cooling systems. You could uh, pull a vacuum down on the cooling system, and as long as it held a vacuum, you know that there was no leaks on the system. And then what you do is you hook your coolant into the end of that hose there, and once you open the valve, it would suck the coolant into the system and get rid of all the air. It is a pretty cool little tool, but I don't have a use for it anymore. It's just the other connectors. Okay. It's just uh, all my brake tools that I have that I don't have no use for hardly anymore unless I'm working on my own vehicle. This is all my test lights that I have. It's uh, used for checking a harness on the 4L80s. This is the old seal installer that ATEC used to sell. I found out they don't sell it anymore. It was made out of plastic. And I used the crap out of it, but it started breaking. And they wouldn't put them in anymore. And that's when I went looking for that metal one I have over there. I wish I knew where the hell I got it from. This is a good little set. And a drill doctor. Uh, used for sharpening of my drill bits. Um, if I need it, a really good sharpening on it, this is what I'll use. I don't use it real often. It's when I was a machinist. I was taught how to sharpen a drill bit and I can usually get it pretty good if I having a bad day and I can't get it to where it's uh, going to cut very well then I'll stick it in here and sharpen it. This little set right here for 
started doing ball joints. I don't have a use for it anymore unless I'm doing my own, which is next to never. This is uh, EPMS. Toolkit had uh, torque wrenches in here. I specifically bought these torque wrenches to put in my uh, gun bags, and that was before. Um, oh, who is it? Fix it sticks come out with all their their stuff, so I don't really have a, much of a use for it anymore. I ought to bring them back up here and put it back in this box. I, I use the fix-it stick stuff now. This was uh, my torch kit. I don't have a need for it because I use the one I have here at the shop. And bearing puller kit. uses this quite often. These big pair, uh, pair of pliers. I haven't used them very much but they do come in handy. Some of the really big stuff. this one very much at all. This one here I used quite a bit. This one here I used quite a bit. stuff I've come up with. This came out of a Chrysler uh, tool kit for doing diff bearings on 604s and uh, what the hell did they call the tranny? 413s, 670s, all that kind of stuff. So we change the bearing in, in the vehicle. Got another little arbor press. I don't never use that. I always use the one over there. Used to have the uh, Makita flashlights and drills, and I even have a Bosch. All of them are dead because the batteries are all dead, and it costs too damn much money to, to replace. So I've started going to this it's Harbor Freight. It cost me 18 bucks. It lasts about a year. I all spend $18 a year. It's fine by me. Uh, most of all this stuff is craftsman stuff. And I don't need it to be very strong. Valve body lineup tools. I think these came from ATEC. These I just made myself. These two. These came out of E4D using the lineup CD4E pumps. Keep extra bits because I don't need to be held back because a bit broke. This one here I use for Mercedes. Uh, 722.3 is drilling out there, chamfering the holes on the pistons. This is my uh, digital calipers that I use. This, uh, I was really upset when this happened. I had this pair of calipers for God, I don't know, 40 years. 
and uh, I dropped them one day and broke them. This is the pair of calipers I had when I was a machinist, and it was a damn good, damn good pair of calipers until I dropped it. Nostalgia purposes, I guess. Now, this is the uh, model number for the digital calipers. If you want to get them, they work fine for my purposes. This is the air test plate from Sonex. Uh, yeah, I guess we go over here. Most of my screwdrivers are from Snap-on. That one, and a big pry bar. This is what I'm using for most of my snap rings. Uh, Sonic, uh, Sonic, Snap on, redesigned the thing, and uh, it's not near as good as it used to be. And I got some smaller ones that get in different places. Those are all snap-ons. These are Harbor Freight. This one broke the first time I used it, but I don't really care about the handle. It does what I need it to do. You come as a set. You get the flat blade and you get a Phillips. Don't ever use the Phillips. Most of my snap ring pliers are all snap-ons. Got different tips, do different things. I think this is still snap on. Uh, that one's a Mat Matco. Um, I think this big pair of channel locks come from Harbor Freight. All the rest of this is stuff I've had forever. These are Matco, I believe. Pretty sure these are. This came out of that set that I showed you. That's Cornwell. But I just got various different ones. These pliers are not really that you know critical that you get something. I mean, you want a good quality, but you don't need to go spend. A crap ton of money on them. Uh, various different uh, wire cutters and things. Vacula. This is made by Vacula, but this is a Mac brand. Uh, uh, this one here got from. I got that from Transtar back in the day. It's made specifically for doing the snap rings on the 604s on the pinion shaft. And then, uh, you know, different, different tips. It's all about speed on this. I, I keep two different sets so I don't have to, and you, if you're not doing this all the time, you can get one that you can uh, you know, take apart and make, you got the, where it pulls it together and then you got the ones where it pushes it apart. I just keep one of each so I'll, I don't have to sit there and, and readjust. It saves me time. Everything's all about time. So I got one that, of each that does each way. Except for this, I don't hardly use this that much, and it's usually set to where I need it. Uh, these here, I don't remember what tool truck I got them off of, I think. I think I got them off the Matco truck and they're adjustable and I really like the hell out of them. They make various different sizes of them. They make great big huge ones. Uh, 
Uh, this is from ATEC. It, it does the GM like 4L, uh, 4L60s, 350s. Does the rear spring cage on those. I uh, also modified that to do the servos on the 470Ws. There's a video on that. Little light I got here. Um, various Allen heads. I got I got a metric and a standard. Various magnets that I got. Can get into different areas. Some of them are really small. You know, some of them are really big. Most of my sockets are snap-ons. Uh, there are a few mixed in there, but the majority of mine are, are snap-on. And the reason I went snap-on is that they're taller. You find that most of the others are a little bit shorter. And for what I need, it's uh, you know mostly what I use. And uh, used to back in the day, especially when I was out on the floor, I would need uh, 12 points, uh, the 12 and the 10. I don't need them so much anymore, but they do come in handy sometimes. Yeah. This is all metric over here. This is all standard over here. Um, do need a 12.38s for doing the 4L80 center sports and 400s. This is the socket for doing the GM 4L60 front pumps except for the super late model and the super late model is that one right there. Um, keep most of what I need is that I use all the time is right up here. Um, I don't want to go wandering around trying to find it. I got all my Allen heads over here. Got my air hammer stuff here. The 10 millimeter I use so often I don't need open the drawer. I can just reach in here and get it. My uh, chisel for staking stuff in place. All my extensions that I use mostly these are for pulling out uh, pumps and stuff. And my band apply pins for checking bores on transmissions. all the special sockets that I use. These are all the half inches that I use um, most often. Now when I get into the big sockets like this I, I don't care about the brand name. And I, This one here is from uh, Northern and it costs like 10 bucks. I'll spend 10 bucks on a socket like this because if I need to modify it like this one um, this cost, you know, 50, 60 bucks from Matco, and when I grind it down like this, it's already cracked. And unless I'm using this in an area where it fits really tight, this socket's no good anymore. I'll spend 10 bucks and, and break a socket. I don't care about that. But when I spend 50, 60 bucks on a socket, I, I, I'm mattering that it that it breaks then. So on the big stuff like this, these are all cheapo sockets. This is Crashman. This is, uh, you know, I can grind that down. It was a $20 socket. I didn't care less about doing that. This one I made special. I needed, uh, I don't know what I needed it for, but I took two and welded it into it and uh, made it deep enough. You know, that cost me I think like 30 bucks to make that, and whereas the socket that they wanted 80 damn dollars for it, I'm not going to spend that kind of money on a socket if I don't need to. And so all my really big stuff is uh, normally not a brand name. Some of them are. I mean that's a that's a snap-on. This is a snap-on. But uh, I'm not going to spend that kind of money if I don't have to. These are all my wobble sockets. This side over here is all uh, American. This side over here is all metric. The speed handle is from uh, Snap-on. 
I have a long extension here from Snap-on, 3 8 Use that for getting down inside the 604s to get that back piston out. With a half inch ratchet, Snap-on. Some of this other stuff, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't matter that you don't need to spend a ton of money on some of this stuff. Uh, my little impacts Cornwell. This little dude right here is really stout. I've had to get used to it. It don't have from the straight out the box. It only had one speed. I mean, you know, you're supposed to be able to turn this little dial right here and. It, supposed to cut the, the speed down and the torque it it don't matter where you put it it's full on no matter what you do so it's been like that from day one and I've I've gotten pretty used to it I it's given me a lot of uh, trigger control so I, I know how to work it really well my half inch impact I've had different ones Throughout the years, I find that the Ingersoll Rand is fine for me. It's got plenty of power. The cost point is better than um, the Snap-ons and, and all that. So this this gun works just fine for me. I'm thinking and it's a 231 Model A. Works really well. My air hammer is Mac. I mean, some of the stuff you want to be quality stuff, but you don't, there again, you don't have to spend a ton of money. The Ingersoll Rand is just fine. And in fact, they'll, they'll make a lot of stuff for the other manufacturers, so you just need to be careful of what you're buying and uh, get the best deal. This is Craftsman Impact Driver. I use that quite a bit. Uh, in here, you got silk pullers and vice grips. Here again, I'm not so worried about names. In here is all my screwdrivers and punches. Uh, some of them are brand name. My punches are because uh, I need them to be tough. But uh, not all my screwdrivers are. I like this dude right here. I, I've quit using him because he's finally starting to break. But this thing's been with me since uh, I started. And uh, this is a Stanley. And Stanleys aren't usually very tough. But I beat the hell out of this thing. And it's it stood up to it. And there's my little files that I showed you in the kit from before. So all my screwdrivers and... Uh, punches are in here and the scribes and then the wrenches sometimes it's uh, important that you have a like a snap-on a lot of my wrenches are snap-ons and the way the reason why they're they're snap-ons is they feel good in the hand and they usually have the right bend to them and uh, I do have some others in there so I got some Matcos uh, but the majority of them are probably either Snap-on or Harbor Freight. You get into a big wrench like this, a Harbor Freight is just fine. You, you're not going to probably break it, and if you do it, it's not going to cost you that much. But the big stuff is, is fine to have in the cheaper stuff because there's so much metal there, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, I believe these came off the, yeah, this is a blue point, so it's snap-on. It came off the snap-on truck just for doing the lever seals on the later model 4L60s. Uh, this either came from ATEC or uh, snap-on. It's just the tool for doing the earlier model, 350s, 400s, 700s, lever seals. This do most all your early uh, GMs. This here is for doing the the torque flight lever seals in the uh, vehicle. This is the installer for it. This is a remover. Uh, it's got KD 2392. I think I got that off of the snap-on truck back in the day. It's all my crow's feet. 
don't hardly use these much anymore. I got metric and American. All my weird uh, wrenches that I've like these here. These used to use these for doing the uh, 325s, 425s differentials. This would get up there and get those bolts on the differential off the transmission really good. And this is all my weird stuff that I've had to bend and, and make certain things out of to uh, get in certain places. Wrenches I've cut off to get in certain places. Uh, some of this stuff, like this one here, this worked really good for doing. Uh, it's made for a distributor, but it worked really well for doing the mount bolts on a on the old AXODs and. Uh, in the Tauruses and stuff like that, and then uh, what was I think it was the Lincoln was it the Lincoln? I think it was the Lincoln that uh, was really really hard to get to that nut on top, and that worked really well for it. That and uh, I had a extension and a special wobble socket that worked really well for doing that. And so that's all my wrenches. And down here is all the sockets that I don't use that much anymore. Uh, this is for uh, nuts on Mercedes. Um, it's an M250. But yeah, spline drives that don't use much anymore on my Allen heads. I don't use that much anymore because I'm not out on the floor. And I uh, started keeping, uh, when I would find wheel lock tools, I would keep those because you never know when you, it comes in handy. And, uh, you know, like this um, half inch set of sockets here, these are, these are Harbor Freight. I had them for a long, long time. This is the socket for doing the pressure switches on uh, 350s and stuff like that. It's from Mac. And, but they work on different, uh, different uh, switches that they have out there. There's a couple different ones, I think. I got a couple different ones in here somewhere. I don't know what happened to the other one. Somebody probably walked off with it. Well, here's one right here. Not to get special on this either. You can get those from uh, O'Reilly's and stuff like that. This is a special socket I made for O1Ms. This is a again a Craftsman socket and uh, welded it to a piece of muffler pipe, cut out the inside of it, and then notched it out for the deal, and then welded a nut on the top of it to use a socket on it. Okay, ran out of battery, not sure where. Uh, so this is the pullers, uh, I mean the tools I got from Adapt-Case to do those Subaru CVTs here recently. And this one, these two I haven't even got to use yet. Cheapo earmuffs I use. They're just shooting range earmuffs. Got uh, various hose clamps I use. Uh, these are just a couple nuts I welded together and I run a bolt down the center of them to help strengthen it. And this is what I use to get the bolt out of the back of a O1M planetary. I make a lot of my stuff. I, I, I'm not going to spend all the kind of money that they want for a lot of this stuff. There's uh, pullers for the CVTs again. This is a deal I made out of a bearing race piece of muffler pipe to put 
sell in one of the ZF units down in the differential pinion gear. CD4E pump plates I've cut different shapes to put in the return springs on the CVTs and just different things I've made out of different things. This here I'm not sure where I got. I've had it for a hundred million years. This pulls the pumps out of uh, I use it to pull the pumps out of 5R55Ws but it was made to pull pumps out of other things long before that. This is the slide hammer I got to do the E4LD front pumps. I'm not sure. I believe I bought the, the these pieces, the screwing pieces from Transtar, but I don't I don't remember for a fact. And the uh, slide hammer I think is I think it's from Harbor Freight, but I'm not positive on that either. Um, uh, go on over here. This is a ATEC uh, spring compressor. Um, I use it for mostly 604s now and, and stuff that's too big to fit on the adapter case press. I use mostly the adapter case press now. And this is all the old stuff that I used to use, extensions and stuff that I don't never use anymore. And you know, different adapters for this press here. Uh, different ring gears I've come up with, like this one's off of 4L60. I use that for pressing the return spring on the 604s. And just uh, like this is a, a what the hell is it? I think it's a C6 front forward drum you know, lower pressure plate. I just I've adapted it to do different things and I keep it all over here. Here's a, a different spring compressor tool. It adjusts out to different sizes. I don't remember where I got it from. It may have been ATEC. There's no name on it. Uh, battery chargers I don't use anymore because I don't use them batteries in them drills. I don't find no need to spend that kind of money on that stuff. Uh, this is an old tool. It's been homemade that uh, I used for doing 5R110 rear uh, springs in the low piston. But it was originally made because we didn't have these foot presses so this is how we used to do it back in the day different things like that and that came from Harris Mock and Tool works for this thing I don't remember what it was used for but I know what I use it for now and then the lube guard mixes I use these for when I Disassemble my valve bodies. Sometimes I use these if I got to take all the valves out. Sometimes I'll use these. Sometimes I'll just use rags and various different things. I don't remember what this tool goes for. It's a height gauge of some sort. And I guess, uh, you know, we got all these reamers for all the valve bodies stuff. Is uh, is all from Sonex. Most all this stuff is uh, all Sonex. The only one that's not that, that's younger for the 5L40s are Transgo. Um, various different sandpapers that we use, and I guess that's about it. Uh, Transmission holder came from ATEC. This is the GM one for 350s, 700s. I use it for 470Ws. Anything that I can wrap around the case like that. And I got uh, this one. It's for the 40, 40s, 60s, stuff like that. I've 
drilled several different holes in it to fit different stuff. And that uh, E4OD one over there, and that all came from Trans uh, ATEC. Um, other than that, I think that is all the tools that I use. Alright, a few things that I forgot. I got a uh, solenoid tester. Actually, I got two of them. One doesn't work so well anymore. But what it allows you to do, you hook air to it. You can put your solenoid on it and regulate the air pressure. <clears throat> and then you can shoot juice to it and see if it opens and closes and holds like it's supposed to. And this is the Chrysler differential bearing tool I was telling you about some of those pieces came out of. Here's some other tools I don't use hardly ever anymore. Got the uh, pie pin tool for uh, 440s and 4260s. And then there's a the KM tool in there. In KM and I can't even remember. <clears throat> and uh, this is my half inch drill that I use for doing my reaming. It's a Black and Decker hammer drill. Just make sure that you're uh, setting doesn't go over and you, know, you stay over in the drill part and not in the hammer part. It don't make for a very pretty ring when you as it happened to me once it's it scooted over there by accident. <clears throat> and I got a plastic welder. I haven't used this in quite some time but I have fixed quite a few things that uh Plastic wise, got broke. Air boxes and stuff like that. Uh, that's another sauna flow. There's nothing there. Um, and then I got this uh, from Lube Guard. I got this. Lip seal resizers. This works good on the 5L40s. And uh, you put your put your pistons in here, and it resizes it. They got some stuff that you can uh, spray in there. Is basically um, Freon, and it freezes the seals, <clears throat> keeps them in a collapsed state, so that you can drop them down in the deal real easy. Now I've found. It works fine on all but one of the the pistons and it's in the center support. And the only way I found to, to make them things work out right is you put it in there and you go put it in the freezer of the refrigerator and you leave it in there overnight and put your housing I usually put the housing in there too and as soon as you come in in the morning, pop it out of the deal and drop it immediately into the in its center support. Don't give it any time to start thawing. Just immediately drop it in there. Usually it falls right in. That's the only way I found to get that that lip seal in or that piston in. <clears throat> then I got these, and I just keep uh, special stuff. These are Planet Shim kits, Quick Shims. Uh, I just keep extra stuff that uh, 
sort of hard to come by. I got uh, extra band struts in here for lots of different trannies. <clears throat> I got uh, different pins, modulator brackets for different stuff, and just different weird brackets that, uh, you know, if stuff's going to get thrown away, then I, I'm going and getting it. I got uh, stuff for the kick down linkages on 350s. I uh, tried to keep some for 700s and uh, all that stuff. There's some pins for a transfer case. <clears throat> Valve bodies that are bad that I'm throwing away, I'll, I'll take apart and I'll get the keepers out of them. If there's any good valves in them, I will, uh, I will get them. If I've ordered the parts bef <clears throat> before and need to keep the part number, I, I keep the little tag and, you know, just stuff to make things easier on me. And in case you lose stuff, stuff breaks that you're not used to breaking. I usually have little extras here that'll, that'll do whatever I need to do. If it's some weird stuff, uh, I generally might have it. Little filters that go in everywhere. Some of the ones I just I throw them away. You don't have to have them like these, these Honda ones. I don't know why you can keep those because I don't, I never put them back. <coughs> different stuff to keep extra filler tube boots and kick down boots pivot pins for pumps and modulator valves boost valves for the pumps case savers rattle clips this is all Ford and, and Dodge here All kind of weird stuff. Vacuum switch for a transfer case. This is little dude right here is extremely expensive. Brackets going valve bodies. Differential pins. Bolts for center supports. All your weird little bolts. Got a box full of speedometer gears around here. These little dudes, sometimes these fly off and you can't find them. You need thermal valves to go on your 4060s and 4040s, and actually a 4040 doesn't have it, uh, 4060s and 125s and stuff like that. AXODEs, all your little different clips that go on your valve bodies, your pins. Keepers, in plugs, just all kind of weird stuff. Saves you time from having to search for stuff. Okay, now this time. Okay, now we're not really done. This is the pin vise I was telling you about for the small drill bits. Um, I've, what I've done is this comes with two different collets that go in here. The other collet's in with the other drill bits, but this has an end that screws on here too. The other collet would fit in here. And it's I just take the took the other end off, leave the collet over there and I can chuck this up in my my drill and drill with it instead of using it by hand. So that's what I've been doing. And then uh, some other things that we got is uh, Feeler gauge for checking all the clearances and pump gears and everything. Uh, welding and some glasses if you just blowing stuff out and everything. Need safety glasses. And then I got the other things. These are 350 modulator pins that I cut off. I use these for lineup pins for my 350s and 400s. 
and this little extra stuff that uh, keep around. Um, where's the? Here's the. Here's the arbor for those uh, Scotch Brite. Whatever the hell you call them. They screw on the end of this and just chuck this up in your drill. <clears throat> I keep uh, Scotch Brite pads. Usually keep the green ones. They're kind of fine. And I'll cut a strip off and I'll use this to uh, polish up my valves. And usually about the time the safety clean guy shows up. Uh, clean the machine about when this is worn out so about every three months I'm probably getting a new scotch rock pad uh, other things that I've done is I'll take this is a speedometer gear out of a Toyota and this end right here fits up in the cable but what I do is I use that I wrap some uh, some Sandpaper, start it in there, wrap it around, chuck this up in the drill, and you can get up in a bore and kind of polish it out with this. And a little bench buddies for doing different valves on different deals. Uh, I got a couple of really long drill bits. These are, I used them for back in the day for drilling out exhaust bolts but uh, these work real good for doing uh, drilling out the pump relief holes in the pumps so I got a couple of those I've got several different sizes of it but this is a quarter inch is the main one that I'm using now for the pumps um, I guess I think for real 